finally the real story? A remarkable work has come to light written by the late Paul Hill. For years, Hill held a top job at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, which later became NASA. While there, he secretly compiled data in a private journal. It may be the most comprehensive document ever written about UFOs. NASA's official policy was that UFOs did not exist, and my father just refused to go along with that. Julie Hill is Paul Hill's daughter. She's responsible for unearthing the manuscript that her father secretly wrote during his years at NASA. I knew when my father was alive that he was working on a manuscript about UFOs, and I got a bit curious. I thought I, it was something I didn't want to be lost. And so when I asked my mother where it was, she told me, and I went to his desk just to pick it up and look at it and maybe put it in a safer place. And when I opened it and looked at it, I was just astounded at what I saw. Julie discovered a manuscript that presented clear and precise evidence about UFOs. Her father had meticulously gathered reports from numerous eyewitness testimonies. The report provided specific information about alien spacecraft, as well as physical details of the occupants. He became sort of a clearinghouse, so when uh, pilots had sightings or aircraft spotters had sightings, he would get those reports and he would interview the, the people to find out all the, the different facts pertaining to the sightings. There are many astonishing revelations in the book. Many defy our laws of physics. Observed accelerations at the order of 100 times Earth's surface gravity. In a 100 G turn, if it lasted for a second, everything would be squashed. You know, it'd just be flattened. <laughs> Dr. Robert Wood headed up several highly classified projects for McDonnell Douglas. He is also a physicist who closely followed Hill's work. Clearly, you're talking about hundreds of Gs, and you're talking about the occupants being able to withstand that, or they don't feel it. And so that was one of the things that caused Paul and I to both feel that clearly there was some sort of inertia and gravity control involved with high accelerations. UFOs have solid surfaces. This characteristic is attested to by those who have touched them, wrapped on them, and listened to the thud or the whine of ricocheting bullets from rifle or point-blank pistol fire. He and I were clearly uh, of the opinion that these were solid craft. They were not artifacts. There were no question about hallucinations. There were multiple witnesses, radar returns. The occupants come in three sizes, diminutive, about three or four feet, human size, five to six feet, and giant, eight or nine feet. Paul Hill gets into the fact that obviously these things must be craft because you see little pilots or beings or occupants along with them. Richard Hall is an author and former director of the National Investigations Committee on Aerial Phenomena. They're quite often, not always, uh, about four to four and a half feet tall, uh, usually wearing light-colored or silvery reflective garb, and quite often they have something that looks like a diver's helmet, sort of a clear dome-like thing over their head, so they appear to need some kind of life support system in our atmosphere. Other statements include detailed descriptions of the size and shape of UFOs. The fact that UFOs have no externally visible engines, power plants, or other means of propulsion, and that UFOs are highly radioactive. After pouring through her father's manuscript, Julie knew that she was sitting on dynamite. She felt she had to make the manuscript public. Well, the first thing I did was I ran off 30 copies of the book, and I took them to a MUFON convention in Richmond, and that's the Mutual UFO Network. Uh, this was a large gathering of scientists, and this was just the type of person I thought would be interested in the book. I didn't know if there was anything in the book that the government would be squeamish about seeing in print, but I figured if I gave it away that it would be out there and no one could stop it after that. Dr. Wood was also in Richmond. Uh, this attractive young woman came up to me and said, are you Dr. Wood? And I said, yes. And then she whipped out this eight and a half by 11 thick manuscript and it was clear that here was someone who uh, had really read his, her father's work enough to know that there was something really sound there. Paul Hill was a man years ahead of his time. Over the years, he conducted experiments with his own unconventional propulsion machines seen here in these old films. His legacy? A remarkable manuscript 
calm, rational, scientific analysis of one of our greatest mysteries. At this recent event at the National Press Club in Washington, D.C., media from around the world met with former NASA scientists and photo analysts. They revealed what they believe may be photographic evidence of extraterrestrial contact during the Apollo program. And what is the official NASA response to Hill's book? We contacted Dennis Bushnell, NASA's chief scientist at Langley. His response? Paul had some interesting speculations in that saucer-shaped objects can fly in a conventional manner. Knowledgeable people are still speculating. These are still open issues. For Paul's daughter, Julie, some things are very clear. When I think about my dad, I, I think he'd be thrilled that his book is in print, that finally some of his work will be out there for public consumption, that people will know how brilliant he was and how hard he worked to bring all this knowledge together.